Hi guys! Ray from Whimsical Pictures here, bringing you my monthly manga haul for the month of April 2017. And first a bit of channel news. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for 200 subscribers. Uh, we hit it a little bit ago, but I didn't want to make a separate video for that because I am planning a giveaway for 250 subscribers, which we should be hitting fairly soon, so look forward to that. The other thing is a major change in my personal life, which is that I have been accepted into the JET program. So I will be moving to Japan at the end of the summer, and I can't even pretend to anticipate for you how that's going to change the content on this channel. Um, I can tell you I'll probably be picking up, you know, most of the books that I do pick up. Um, I don't know how busy I'll be. I have some idea of how poor I'll be. <laughs> um, which is quite. <laughs> um, so we'll see how many books I'll actually be picking up, but, uh, you know, from time to time I'm sure I won't be able to resist, so. Of course I'll talk about those, but they will be primarily in Japanese, I think. And uh, the other thing is I will be vlogging from Japan. I'm sure that I will not be able to resist vlogging like every other day, so look forward to that. <laughs> um, or don't. You can just leave. That's fine, too. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I can't anticipate what my channel's gonna look like after I move to Japan. But, uh, hopefully cool. Hopefully it'll be a cool channel. <laughs> so that is it for channel news. Now into the stuff that I bought. First is the only used thing that I got, which is a figure. I've already done an unboxing of her, so watch that if you want to see more thoughts. But, uh, this is the Super Sonico uh, Okigai prize figure, and I just, she was quite cheap, and she's adorable, so I'm happy to have her. The other thing that I also did an unboxing of, uh, if you want to go watch me get absurdly excited about manga, <laughs> uh, is the Revolutionary Girl Luthana Deluxe box set from Viz. Uh, it feels weird to put this with my other Viz stuff because it's so different. But this is all five volumes of the series collected into these two beautiful omnibus volumes. Um, the manga. I am gonna be honest, I'm having some trouble getting through it because of the changes from the anime. Uh, some of which I uh, don't necessarily appreciate, <laughs> particularly with jury. Um, straight jury is definitely a new thing for me. That is, uh, I am having trouble wrapping my head around her being straight. <laughs> um, but. I am so happy to have this because I love Utena so much. It's sitting up here next to my Utena figure. Uh, it really isn't that expensive for the quality that you're getting. Um, it's $50, but you can get it for $40 if you get it from um, Bright Stuff or if you're like me and you use your Barnes & Noble membership and a coupon. <laughs> um, so, yeah. it's. Uh, I'll definitely be doing a review of the manga once I finish it, but... I'm trying to focus on novels right now, so I don't know when that'll be, but uh, sometime before I leave for Japan, probably. <laughs> uh, it also came with this gorgeous poster, which I'm going to get framed sometime in the next week, probably. Um, that's just a beautiful illustration. I don't know why they went with the naked one for the poster, but that's okay. <laughs> it's artistic. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, and now into my normal manga pickups. Nothing used, um, except for that figure, so all of this is Sustain the Industry, like, new release type of stuff. Uh, the first one is the one I'm reading right now, I'm like halfway through. This is volume four of Happiness by Shuzo Oshimi. Look at that gorgeous cover. Wow. All the covers have been gorgeous, but this is easily my favorite. I love all those colors. Um... Shuzo Oshimi is one of the only mangaka whose art I could describe as expressionistic. Um, it really is focused on showing the sort of interior emotions of these characters, and you can tell that he's very inspired by expressionists like Kirshna and Munch. Um, 
this is my favorite work of Oshimi's so far. Um, I do like Flowers of Evil. I liked Inside Mari a lot, except for that ending. <laughs> um, and But this is my favorite. Um, and maybe that's just because I like vampires. Or maybe it's because I just really like this series. But I recommend it. This volume does come shrink-wrapped for a reason. Um, you can see the rating has changed as well. This includes some disturbing sexual content, so if that is something that bothers you or that you just don't want to read about, um, just know that going in. You know, if you don't want to read that, you know, nobody's gonna blame you, of course. So, yeah. That is it. Great series. And then I don't know if I showed volume three of this series before, uh, but I definitely didn't show volume four, so... This is volumes three and four of Princess Jellyfish by Akiko Higashimura. Uh, one of my favorite series coming out right now. I actually haven't read past the second omnibus, so hoping to get to these fairly soon. Um, I just love this series so, so much. <laughs> so much. I love these characters. I love her art style. I love her uh, sense of humor. Um, Everything about her manga just feels super modern, which is nice. Uh, definitely she's an author I'm going to be looking into when I move to Japan. Because she is quite prolific, um, and I'd like to read her other works. Next, a series that um, I got a volume to catch up on, and then now I'm behind again. <laughs> Not as volume 3 of Welcome to the Ballroom. Uh, I'll have to get volume 4 in my next online order. But... This is by far my favorite volume so far. Um, I really felt the exhilaration in the dance scenes. I really love Mako. I think she's so adorable. <laughs> she's so cute. Yeah. There she is with the uh, padding flying out of her boobs. <laughs> um, she's so cute. Um, yeah. Look at my waifu. All the girls are, like, gorgeous, so... <laughs> but, uh, people were, like, upset about the art in this one, but I actually, this was the first volume where I really loved the art. I really felt the movement of the dancing. Um, and this is a great sports series about an unusual subject. And I am really looking forward to getting volume four. And I'm also really looking forward to the anime, because... Like, actual animation and movement is gonna do so much for this series. Next we have one I picked up, like, yesterday. <laughs> it just came out. This is Volume 1 of Dream and Sun by Ichigo Takano, the creator of Orange, which I absolutely adored that series, so. And I've actually enjoyed a couple other series of hers that have been put on Crunchyroll manga, so I'm pretty much in the boat of, if it has her name on it, I'll probably pick it up. It helps that I love the design of this volume. I think it's very cute, very well designed. Uh, this looks to be a rom-com, but honestly, I don't know anything about it. So I'll get back to you with the first impressions probably once I read this. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to read more from this author. Next, we have the final omnibus, Omnibus 4 of Frank and Fran by Katsuhisa Kigitsu, and this is a super great, gross, disturbing horror comedy series. Um, as I've said before, I'm really happy to see a couple other manga tubers who are more popular than me <laughs> getting into this series, so hopefully more people will read it. Um, despite the etchy covers, this really isn't indicative of what the series is. The back cover illustrations are probably a lot more indicative. But I'm really happy to have completed my collection of the series. It is only eight volumes long, so only four books. And, uh, yeah, Fran herself is probably one of, like, my favorite female manga characters of all time. Like, top ten, honestly. I love her. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Frank and Fran is great. Next we have from Vertical, uh, Devil's Line Volume 6. Um, I'll do a series review of this eventually because I have lots of words to say, but I'll just reiterate again and again that I love 
the series. I love where it's going. Every volume I love more and more. <laughs> and it's a very high quality release from Vertical. So, yeah. I will also say that y'all should be following Ryohanada on Twitter because she's a lot of fun and she talks about Yuri on Ice a lot. And also, like, seinen manga recommendations. She was talking about I Am a Hero a little bit ago. So, uh, yeah, she's just fun. <laughs> then we have Everyone's Getting Married, Volume 4. This is from Fizz. Uh, again, just a really fun, uh, grown-up Jose romance series. Continuing to enjoy it. Enjoyed this volume a little less. Um, but not in any way where I was like, oh, this series has gone to the dogs. It's just sort of, uh, the content wasn't as interesting just by nature of what it was. So looking forward to the next one. There's also a side story at the end of this that I did not like at all. So yeah, much more typical Jose romance, I feel like, with sort of a romanticizing of an abusive relationship. So I did not enjoy that, but the main volume was fine. <laughs> Next we have another one I picked up like yesterday, which is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 3, Volume 3, with Whole Horse on the cover and Hanged Man on the back. I love Whole Horse, so I'm happy to see him get his own cover. Um, Jojo's continues to be fun, these continue to be beautiful releases. I love that the color pages are included sort of throughout the volume, rather than just in like weird glossy pictures on the front, or at the front. I really like the uh, end papers here, where it sort of shows a map of where they are in this volume. Um, and one of my favorite things is these end papers in all of these volumes that are beautifully designed with all of these sound effects. That is just like one of my favorite touches in these releases, honestly. JoJo's is great. Um, read the manga or watch the anime, they're both great. And yeah. Uh, Magi, I got volume 23. This is one of my favorite uh, currently running shonen series. Sort of my long running shonen drug of choice. That said, I have only read through volume 15 because that's what I own. This has created a gap for me, but I got it from a manga Monday uh, since it was cheap. And I am working on catching up uh, throughout this year, so hopefully by the end of the year I will be caught up. Next we have a total impulse purchase, but I'm glad I bought it because the second I finished it I knew it was one of my favorite manga I've ever read, and that is Solonen by Inio Asano. It's a one-shot volume. Uh, two volumes originally in Japanese. Um, a lot of people keep like getting confused about what this is. These are called French flaps. <laughs> um, and they're beautiful. That's gorgeous. Um, I knew about this series, or this book, when, when I was in high school. And I knew I wanted to read it, but I felt like it wasn't the right time. And having read it now, I feel like my teenage self was correct. <laughs> Uh, this was the perfect time for me to read this. Now that I'm sort of fresh out of college and trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing with my life, was the perfect time to read this. So, certainly if you're in that boat along with me, you know, welcome, uh, to the Sad People Club. And, uh, this may be the perfect read for you right now. Um... My favorite Asano work so far, and uh, again, it feels very literary. Uh, it definitely feels a lot like a lot of the Japanese literature that I've been reading, which is great because I love Japanese literature, and I'm trying to read more and more of it. Um, I will say this is an older work of hers, and, or his, and you can tell sort of in the integration of the backgrounds. Uh, he uses photographic backgrounds. Um, he takes his own photos and he sort of manipulates them in Photoshop uh, to look like they're part of the uh, 
comic, but I feel like in this volume he hasn't quite found the right balance. And it does look a bit like sort of cartoon characters plastered on a photographic background sometimes. Like there. Um, this is sort of a kink that he works out of his artwork in uh, later books, like Girl on the Shore. Uh, but here you can sort of tell that uh, he hasn't quite found the right balance yet. But that's such a minor thing for such a masterful work. Gave this 5 out of 5 stars, which is a very rare rating for me. So, yeah. Definitely recommend that, just like everybody else ever. Then we have Tokyo Ghoul, Volume 12. I uh, love this cover. Continuing to love this series. Two more volumes and it will be complete. Um, and then we'll start getting Re, and I'm excited about that too. So, yeah, read Tokyo Ghoul. It's good. <laughs> Next we have an interesting new release. This is volume one of The Water Dragon's Bride by Rei Toma. She did Dawn of the Arcana, uh, which is a really great sort of dark political fantasy series that I really love. So I was excited to pick this up uh, because I really do love her storytelling. And this is a fascinating first volume. Very, very dark. Do not let this first, or this cutesy cover, uh, sort of, uh, fool you. It's very, very dark. Um, this is about this girl who, uh, I anticipate a time skip in the near future, but for now she is very small. She falls down a well and, uh, ends up in ancient Japan like, very ancient Japan, <laughs> the Dofung or Dokun period. Um, so this isn't like the Sengoku, Sengoku era, this is way back to like where we only have like a few burial mounds that we know about from them. <laughs> um, which is a cool setting. I don't know much about this era of Japan's history, so that was immediately sort of caught my eye. So. Yeah, she gets sort of, uh, spirited away to ancient Japan, and, um, basically she meets this boy named Subaru, who takes her to his house, you know, immediately befriends her, he wants, you know, good things for her, <laughs> he's worried about her, but his super evil, like, Disney villain mom, uh, decides that she is going to sacrifice her to the water dragon in order to appease him and, you know, hope that he blesses their town. And the water dragon, uh, decides to accept her as his bride, and that is him. Um, he's a very inhuman character. He has a tendency to sort of, uh, forget, for example, that humans die of starvation if you don't feed them. <laughs> so that is uh, really an issue. Um, so she's trying to get away from him and Subaru's trying to find her and the water dragon is using his magic to try to keep them apart. And uh, yeah, I recommend it if you are enjoying The Ancient Magus Bride, or The Girl from the Other Side, or the Manwa, of course, the Bride of the Water God. Um, but, you know, keep in mind that this is much darker in tone. Uh, there is no, like, cute relationship between the Water Dragon and his bride. You know, like the relationship between Elias and, uh, what's-her-face. <laughs> this is, uh... Yeah, very, very interested to see where this goes. Her art has improved quite a bit, too. There were actually a couple of jump scares in here that actually, like, startled me. <laughs> Usually that, uh, manga can't do that to me, even horror manga, but this one, you know, there were a couple times I turned the page and I was like, boo -ha. So, that was fun. <laughs> uh, next we have Volume 5 of Yona of the Dawn, and if I talk about this, I'll just gush about it. <laughs> Because, honestly, reading this makes me feel like a 14-year-old reading Fushigi Yugi for the first time again. And I love that about it. 
the first half of this volume is finishing up the blue dragon stuff from the last volume and then the second half introduces my favorite character my green pirate husband Jeha, who i love dearly and is voiced by junichi suabe in the anime which i feel like is a very important detail um it also introduces introduces gigan uh who is a super badass old lady pirate leader <laughs> Uh, so it's cool to get more, sort of, uh, important, awesome female characters, much like Yona herself. So, yeah, the series is so good. <laughs> it is crack for me. Then from Yen Press, uh, we have Horimiya, Volume 7. Um, continues to be a cute series. There's not much more to say than that. I'm enjoying how the main relationship is progressing, and, uh, it's cute and funny. And I like the spines. Finally, we just have a couple of light novels. We have Durarara Volume 6. Um, Bacano, they did not have at the bookstore. Uh, this one I just sort of bought on a whim because it was there. Um, but they didn't have the new Bacano, so I'm going to have to put that in my next order as well. Uh, the fourth one is out now. But Durarara, the novels, I actually prefer to Bacano. I was very surprised about that, but... The theming is much more complex in this later work by him. And you get much more of sort of the way that he sees the world, which I find very interesting. And I like these themes of like, what it means to live in a society and how one can pursue their own happiness without stepping on the happiness of someone else. And if that's even possible, um, as well as a lot about sort of the nature of relationships and these very sort of weird, toxic relationships that are still fun to read about that he really likes. Um, you can see the page breaks are actually gender symbols, so... <laughs> Just in case you were confused about what this series is about. Um, there's Celtia on her motorcycle. That's a cool illustration. But, yeah. I... Durarara is my personal favorite Narita series. Much as I love Bacano. It's more of just a fun romp, and this one I get more out of, you know, in my brain. <laughs> but I love Narita's writing style, and I'm so happy we're getting those series of his in English. Finally, we have a first volume, uh, Roka, Braves of the Six Flowers, Volume 1. This is a gorgeous illustration on the cover. I love that. This, I watched the anime, and I enjoyed it. But mostly I walked away from it thinking, gosh, I'd love to read the novels. So I'm really happy we're getting them in English. Can't wait to read this. I'll probably be reading it quite soon. This is the story of a fantasy world where six heroes of legend are to gather to fight this demon lord. And when they meet, they are shocked to discover that seven heroes have showed up. <laughs> so one of them is an imposter, and we don't know which one it is and what they want. So we end up in this sort of locked room mystery situation where they're trying to smoke out the intruder. And um, I've been told that later volumes are also sort of playing with genre in the same way. So we have this sort of typical light novel fantasy setup, and then using that typical setup to explore lots of diverse genres that you wouldn't expect to see. Um, so, that's cool. <laughs> um, I've heard good things about the writing as well, so uh, a decently written light novel is a rarity, so <laughs> very excited about this. And that is everything that I picked up for this month. I think it's around 20 volumes. Plus a figure. <laughs> um, thanks again for 200 subscribers, and I'll see you at 250. Happy reading, guys!